Hello everybody, this is Lisa. I'm here at Semiamu Resort and we are just gonna get ready to do our um, seaside cooking with Chef Devin and he's just inside. I just thought I'd be outside because oh my gosh, this weather is so fantastic that I just had to give you a sneak peek of what it looks like out here on the bay. It's so beautiful and it's so quiet uh, and it's just so peaceful. And so as uh, we go through this time, and I know there's so many people there wondering what can they do once everything starts opening back up, we're here and we are kind of out in the middle of nowhere. We're actually completely surrounded by water here down on the spit on Semiamu Parkway Drive here in Blaine, Washington. And uh, it's so peaceful there is tons of room and so there's lots of um, of space so really social distancing won't be much of a problem here because we are so um, secluded and it's great and you can just beach comb and sit on the beach and uh, hi Ray and Kathy the Devin's mom and dad are joining and watching keeping an eye on their son uh, so anyways it's just so beautiful there I just actually am can see people out there they're doing like some kind of uh, water bike out there it is gorgeous hi Lauren so thank you everybody for joining us um, we're gonna do our cooking demo today with uh, Nurka salmon and uh, please go check them out on Facebook uh, they are taking orders they're just local Whatcom County um, company and it'd be fantastic you know support local Devin and I have been saying that for years. When I had my own place up in Surrey, British Columbia, I said back then, local, local, local. It is so important to support local. And uh, now we're really seeing just how important and valuable that is. All right, so I'm gonna go inside here and we're gonna start cooking with Devin because I know you're not here to watch me, you're here to watch Devin and I don't blame you probably one of the most talented chefs that I have ever worked with and I've worked with a few and uh, I don't just say that to you know kiss up he really does he really does some amazing amazing food so just gonna walk back over here and your mom and dad are watching oh of course <laughs> hi mom hi dad <laughs> well, welcome back. We're doing another of our uh, seaside cooking here classes here at Semiamu. Um, so today we're going to focus and feature Nurka salmon, which is uh, from our friends at uh, Telly and Joel from Nurka Flash Frozen Sea Frozen Salmon. Um, if you're interested in trying to buy some of it, uh, they are doing sales or they were doing sales um, directly through Facebook. So if you go on their Facebook site, that's Nurka N E R K A. Uh, flash frozen sea salmon then you will uh, you can direct message uh, Telly or Joel and ask and see and what they've been doing is they've set up uh, a delivery uh, once a day a week and they will for a refrigerator put a, a cooler on your front porch and they will no touch service drop um, uh, a whole flash frozen salmon um, at your door so uh, like and they have several different types they have um, uh, mostly right now we've been getting a lot of their coho which is fantastic and that's what we're using today uh, the other item that we're gonna feature are sunchokes uh, not sure Jerusalem artichokes not sure how many people are familiar with it but it is one of my favorite uh, kind of unique produce items to work with so um, right here we have some of our fresh grown sunchokes and they're knobby a little dirty they uh, are tubers so they grow in the ground um, these are really uh, very nice and clean um, so what we do with these is uh, I, I do several different uh, ways I'll roast them I'll make them into puree and then I also uh, um, I've done soups with them and stuff like that too but we'll uh, I, I shave them really finely uh, deep fry them make little crisps as well oh, that's um, so good. the last uh, the last part of our dish that we're gonna make is a bear rouge and it's a white or it's a red wine butter sauce so same thing as a beurre blanc just using red wine uh, but that bear rouge is a very typical accompaniment to a wine dinner Dinner. It allows me to use that wine within the dish. So anytime I'm doing a wine dinner, I'm either thinking about how to pair with that wine very specifically, or I'm looking at how to enhance that wine. So 
pairing is typically something that uh, the, the flavors work well and benefit and kind of contrast and complement each other. Um, to really uh, pair well is to bring out extra notes in the, uh, in the food and in the wine. And so with this we're using, uh, we're going back to Ponzi again from yesterday, uh, we're using one of their Pinot Noirs. Um, so typically uh, Bur Blancs are made with white wine. You can use a Sauvignon Blanc. I like to use a, a drier white wines. Pinot Grigios work well. If you're looking to do something in pair with something sweeter, then a Chardonnay, Roussan, or Morsom would be nice as well. Um, they have a little bit more of an oakiness to them uh, since they've been aged. They don't have the dry um, acidity that others do. Uh, but along with this recipe, which we'll post online uh, for the Sancho Puree as well as the Bur Blanc, along with this uh, recipe, I'll show you how to reduce it and we add a little vinegar as well to kind of give it a kick. Um, but yeah, so we're going to start with uh, um, our sun chokes here. And so uh, I've got um, some roasted, the, just a little olive oil, salt and pepper, cleaned up, cut down. And then I have a puree I made. The puree recipe is, uh, will be online and it's literally just peeled, cut a little bit of water, pinch of salt, reduce that water down um, till it's nice and cooked, but then that water I like to call the liqueur, which has amazing flavor because it's just been soaking in all the um, sunchoke water and all the juices, but the, the flavor is just incredible. So I typically don't add either wine or stock or something. I just use straight water because the flavor of the sunchokes are so amazing. Plus the creaminess that comes out of, out of them are fantastic. Uh, sometimes I'll add a little bit of butter, a little bit of cream towards the end, but I've just left this one nice and light. And I try to do a lot more of my cooking now with a lot less butter and a lot less cream. So at the end of the day, you can finish it with that. If, and if you don't, then you can leave it uh, vegetarian, vegan, gluten-free, all that stuff. So, uh, so those are our sun chokes. Uh, the last one we have for the sun chokes here are um, chips. And so these little guys are just cut really thin on a mandolin or a, uh, I actually have a little uh, handheld truffle slicer, um, chocolate truffle slicer that I use. And uh, you can deep fry these in 325 to 375 degree oil, uh, kind of depending on how dark you want to make. This was done in about 375 degree oil. And uh, you can actually just leave the skin on just like the roasted. You don't have to uh, peel them. I uh, peel them for the puree, just for the color and the texture, but um, the roasted uh, with the skin on is just, just fantastic. And the uh, uh, fried as well, you won't be able to tell. So for the uh, fried, I have a little uh, truffle slicer or a chocolate slicer, and you can use a mandolin or you can try to uh, go thin on your knife, but this is really the best to be consistent, and then that way uh, you'll get the chips nice and evenly fried. So a little bit something like that. And then uh, I go directly from cut right into the uh, frying oil. It takes a little while, you wanna get them nice and dark. If they're a little too light, then they'll stay uh, soft and won't have that crispy crunchiness. Plus the dark color on them really brings out kind of a nutty sweetness if you can kind of smell that. It's uh, nice and light. It's oh. like a, almost oh, yeah. like, a, like a hazelnut roasted kind of Does sweetness to it. Smells good. All right, so the, we're gonna start the beurre blanc now. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a shallot uh, some, uh, looks like we have uh, Josh Sellers Pinot Noir, and then I, uh, I like red wine vinegar, but this I'm using uh, sherry vinegar, uh, Pedro Jimenez, which is one of my favorite vinegars. And so we start out with a cup of uh, red wine, and we're gonna use Pinot Noir, because I think Pinot Noir goes great with salmon. Um, so we're gonna start with one cup of the Pinot Noir. That goes in our so, Chef, somebody um, emailed me and asked me about our um, pans that we're using and asked why aren't we using a stainless steel pan? Uh, why not stainless steel, <laughs> a non-stick, sorry. Why are we using non-stick? So, uh, we don't use non-stick very often. The only time I ever really use non-stick professionally is for eggs. Um, non-stick uh, and the Teflon that goes into them, they have different types now. Uh, my wife and I have a um, ceramic um, non-stick so that we don't use the Teflon. Uh, Teflon is not very good. If you've ever noticed, you see the flakes flake, flake off. Um, I don't know how much of that's getting eaten, how much of it is other places. So our routine with Teflon in the kitchen is it never is ever put on anything above medium heat and you never ever use anything in that pan, including water, other than an oil towel, a dry towel, or a heat, uh, a heat sensitive or a heat non-sensitive, a heat uh, uh, durable spatula. 
So this is the only spatula that ever touches our egg pans and omelet pans and uh, a dry towel and sometimes not even a dry towel, lightly oiled towel because any water or heat will destroy uh, Teflon. So I've had an eight inch um, you know, Teflon pan that we use for our eggs and a, a heavy high duty Teflon too so that it stays and it's a high pressure. The more you spend, you know, you can buy them for $10 or you can buy them for $50, the $50 ones are gonna last. Um, you, you, I've had those that I've, can last for six months to a year. I've also seen them ruined less than a week. So uh, really, if you're gonna do that, try to not use any type of too much heat, um, always lower heat, never any, wood is even too hard. No, nothing too hard in those Teflon pans. You'll get a tremendous amount of life out of them. Always just wipe them out with a dry towel. You can clean off the outside, uh, the under, underneath and everything like that with a soapy rag, but I wouldn't suggest anything else. So, so no dishwasher? No dishwasher, definitely not. Too high of temperature of heat, so. Oops. <laughs> uh, so uh, I did put in a half a cup of the Pedro Jimenez sherry vinegar as well. So right here we've got a uh, cup of uh, the wine, the Pinot Noir, and then a half, uh, half a cup of the sherry vinegar. I'm going to crank up the heat. We're going to get that going. Then I'm also going to dice um, our shallot here. So about a tablespoon of shallot, so I'm not going to use this whole entire shallot. Shallots are my favorite. I love to cook with shallots over an onion. Oh yeah, definitely. They have a, uh, um, a little bit more of a sweet uh, flavor to them. And so when they cook down, they have a little bit more sugar. I always say that they're similar to a uh, sweet onion, Italian sweet or walla walla or something like that, just because of the sugar content that they have. Um, a lot of recipes for a beurre blanc will actually call for, um, for sugar because that sugar has a small amount of protein that will allow it to emulsify the butter into it better. But uh, if you use a shallot or something else, you'll get enough sweetness out of it. All right, so now we have our beurre blanc reducing. So what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna leave this on. Uh, I got it on high. Once it comes to a boil, I'm gonna turn it down slightly and uh, we're gonna let this reduce. So remember, this is about a cup and a half plus those two tablespoons of shallots, and we're gonna reduce this down to about two tablespoons. So it's gonna be a syrup, basically, by the, by the time we start adding the butter. So here we go for that. Um, our next step here, we're going to uh, start to sear some of our wonderful uh, Nurka salmon. So again, I'm going to work with a, um, a medium heat uh, saucepan here. We're gonna add a little extra virgin olive oil right in the middle just to kind of season the pan. So we're gonna let that warm up and get hot. Then over here, I have our Nurka salmon. Now one of the keys with searing salmon, especially with skin on, is you really want that skin dry. So I'm going to dry it even extra with a nice dry towel. So, beautiful skin, but if there's any moisture on it, we're not gonna get that nice hard sear. And we also de don't necessarily need any um, salt on that because the skin definitely has a little saltiness to it. So we're gonna season just the flesh side a little bit before we sear it. Turn up the heat and get us started. Um, we're using a little extra virgin olive oil. Uh, that's just uh, what I typically cook with at home and everywhere else. Uh, um, lighter versions of extra virgin is what I use for heating and oils, and then darker, greener versions is what I use for salads. Yeah, so. I used to have a bakery and I did a lot of retail, and I, so I learned a lot about olive oils. So if you're buying an olive oil and it's yellow, it's not pure. That means it's been mixed with most likely a canola or a sunflower oil. So you definitely want to make sure that you're buying really good quality olive oil. If you're buying the good stuff, you don't need to use as much of it because it's thicker, it lasts long, and you'll notice that taste. So if you start tasting really good, extra virgin, cold pressed olive oil, it's really hard to go back to any other kind of olive oil and it's just not good for you. Oh, absolutely, yeah. The, uh, some of the best oil and best fats that you can consume are the cold-pressed. So cold-pressed olive oil is uh, definitely one of the healthiest oils, and I, I cook with it quite a bit. And the only other I use is either grapeseed or canola yeah. um, just for uh, higher flash higher, points and yeah. higher cooking points. And canola, um, which, again, is a, um, similar to soy, is very processed and very uh, genetically modified, so I definitely look for a uh, non-GMO and organic version of it, which you can find. 
not too problematic at all. Yeah. I use grapeseed oil all the time if I'm frying. That's the oil that I use. Then I also use avocado oil. I don't know any studies about it. It just feels like it would be It's a very healthier. high, uh, oh. it definitely has a high flash point just like the grapeseed and other things. Um, I've heard the, the health of an oil really goes down to processing. So uh, sesame oil is, you're not gonna typically get very uh, healthy sesame oil because you have to heat it to extract it. Uh, olive oil, uh, avocado, the other ones, they can be processed 100% cold. Those are the best. Any heat, any kind of even friction, uh, heat that uh, comes from friction, even that will start to destroy and break down. Uh, it's the difference between uh, saturated, polyunsaturated, monounsaturated, and really what you want is that wholer fat that hasn't been broken down and hasn't been processed and hasn't been uh, denatured and so that's what you want is that colder uh, you know the better you can do so yeah colder pressed and I have seen cold pressed avocado oil uh, for are sure you? so yeah all right so here we are we're, uh, we're looking pretty good on our reduction but we got a ways to go so our salmon here is ready to go in the pan oil is nice and hot I'm gonna start with the skin side down because I want to get that nice and crispy That. A little bit more oil, just so that we have a good release when we look to uh, turn our salmon here. our bear rouge. I'm going to cut up some of our butter. And so I, one pound of ice cold butter. I try to keep it as cold as possible. Um, the trick with this for Blanc, you'll see when we get into it, is to try to keep the temperature um, at a balance. So you add too much of this butter, ice cold butter, too quickly, you're gonna drop the temperature and it's gonna freeze and it's gonna seize on you and not freeze, but uh, get cold enough that to the point that it's gonna break. And breaking is a separation of the emulsification of the oil and the water. So you do not want it to break. Uh, it'll make the sauce uh, oily and just unattractive. It doesn't have that creamy, silky smoothness and, uh, that, and flavor and texture. It will definitely have an oily kind of broken uh, texture to it. So we're gonna uh, cube this up so that when we get close, and it looks like our salmon, take a look here. All right, so we got a nice, brown, crispy skin on that. You can see it has a nice texture to it, but it's not overly dark. And put a little bit more olive oil just to keep it basic. Then I'm gonna turn down the heat to much lower. Because the idea is I wanted to get a real nice good sear on this uh, on the skin side. Now I'm going to turn it down and cook it uh, nice to about a nice medium rare on the inside. So back to our Bear Rouge. We are looking at probably about three quarters of a cup or so there. So we got uh, probably about two or three more minutes and we'll be able to start uh, mounting in the butter. Here we go. So I try to cut the butter into small pieces small cubes as possible so that way I can add them uh, one cube at a time very very slow and again we're going to incorporate the butter uh, slowly so it melts but doesn't uh, either heat up too much or is too cold and so we're looking for a real fine balance when we do this. Thank you everybody for joining us and watching us today. We're here at Semiamu in Packers and uh, Chef Devin is doing one of our Semiamu seaside cooking demos and he is making a Nurka salmon with a bur bur With a uh, Bear Rouge, <laughs> a uh, Ponzi Pinot Noir Bear Rouge and uh, local sunchokes three ways. I am paying attention, I swear, <laughs> I swear. 
Um, so anyways, we are, thank you uh, for joining us and we're really happy um, that you guys have. And if you guys have any questions, I'm watching for comments. So if you have any questions in live time, uh, I can ask um, Chef, because obviously you don't want to ask me. And uh, yeah, we can answer them for you here. All right, so here we are. I'm gonna turn our Bear Rouge down to low. Turn about five there. Four. Right, Bear Blanc is... Bear Blanc is white. White wine, <laughs> Bear Rouge is red. Exactly, the only difference. So here we are at about, uh, I'd say about three tablespoons, but you have to consider that one of those tablespoons is the shallots. So if we go like this, we get it over there, and we can see what is uh, coming up as far as the wine goes. We're at about um, we're at about two tablespoons. So this at this point is when I'm going to start to add the butter. Now again, I want a little bit of heat. I don't want it completely off, but I don't want it high because I don't want it to boil and uh, break the butter. I've just turned the salmon off because we're looking pretty good. And if you can see, that's our doneness throughout the middle. And so this is also going to have a little carryover. So I'm going to let it set, but I'm going to flip it back over, be a little more crisp on that skin side as well. But I'm not gonna let that sit too long. We're gonna flip it over um, after that's uh, crisped up again. So here we are with our Bear Rouge and we are gonna start adding in butter slowly and start whisking it. And like a lot of things in the kitchen, a nice tedious project. You cannot rush this. If you rush it too much, you'll break it. If you put in too much of the butter, it'll seize and become a paste and then eventually break. So what I try to do is I try to get almost the entire addition of butter melted before I add the next round. So there we are. Start to see the colors lightening, it's getting a little glossier. So somebody is just asking, a Kristen, she is saying, thank you, chef. I've always wondered how to make Brer without breaking it. Seems like mine breaks after cooking while serving. I'm assuming it must be served immediately or is it my technique while cooking? Um, it could be either one, but it most likely is your, uh, um, uh, service and so you want to keep it at a uh, warmer than room temperature but you don't want to go too hot and so you really the ideal would probably be around 90 to 100 degrees that it was sitting at um, so where we keep it online a lot of times for food service is we'll keep it uh, near a stove or above a stove so it's getting some of the residual heat but you don't want to go too close the other thing is is that if you uh, during your incorporation of the butter if you don't get a nice strong emulsification then it will break on you as well and so the uh, no matter how tight and how uh, and how um, or no matter how you store it and how well you keep it it still has the opportunity to break now in restaurants we will make this sauce and serve it for the rest of the evening and so there is the potentiality to hold it um, at times I have put in like a touch of cream other stuff but if you do this right it's a pretty solid emulsion and you won't you won't worry about you won't worry about uh, breaking it so but if you You're notice, welcome. this is a, uh, if you notice, I did all the work. This is a uh, pound of butter. So this is going to take a while to incorporate. That's another reason why we have the uh, temperature on. Let me turn it up a little bit. Because we want to maintain a nice warm temperature as well in this pan. So if I add too much of this butter too quickly, it's going to drop that temperature. It's going to thicken up like a paste and then it's going to break eventually again and so you want somewhere in between you want that uh light heat but you don't want too much if i were to bring this to a boil right now over medium heat it would break very quickly on us so all right more butter i don't think i can handle that it's so <laughs> slow <laughs> 
It is easier to make this in um, a medium sized batch. It's really hard to make a uh, Blanc for just a couple people. And it's also really hard to make Bur Blanc for a couple hundred. So um, it's, a, it's a great sauce and it can hold for a decent amount of time, but it is very tricky and it is, uh, um, it is kind of a, a nuanced sauce. So it does take knowledge and kind of the feel of having done it before to really be able to incorporate everything really well. The color will get really nice and a nice light um, purple as well. It's one of the reasons why I like to use uh, Pinot and uh, red wines to make a Vert Rouge because on the plate it just sets off and looks so nice. Thank you for that question. That was actually a fantastic question. If you guys have any more questions, feel free to ask. We'd, he'll, have, he'll be happy to answer them for you. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, yeah, so we're getting pretty close to our, uh, um, to our emulsion here. And so another way you can tell how emulsified your sauce is, is how light it is. And so the lighter the color, the more that you've emulsified that butter, the more that there's a, a combination of the oil and water. And if you can see, even in the middle, the more I stir it, you can see a more uh, lighter and creaminess because there's been uh, the incorporation of that, that butter. So the solids, the fat, as well as the, um, as the liquid that's in butter. So we're getting very close our butter here. After this, it looks like I'll have one more incorporation. And I'm able to add a little bit more butter because I have more volume than I did before. That's the only reason I'm adding more is that this capacity can handle it. And I've also turned up the heat a little bit, so we're still at a medium high, but on this uh, one through 20 of these induction burners, we're at a six, so. close one more addition and there we go so once this is fully melted our sauce is good and again I'm keeping the medium temperature on this because I don't want this cold butter to seize too much is this something that you could make and serve again later, or is this like one like one day use? You wouldn't one want to put use. it in the fridge. Nope, you cannot heat it up. Uh, I've had other uses for it. I've added Just it to uh, poaching liquids. Um, I've done you know whatever I can to try to use this sauce, but it's old. But you really can't. Um, I have at times tried to uh, say take like a small amount of it and you add it when I'm adding the butter and reincorporate that in, which works okay. But again, it's not the same as the butter. It's not the completely fresh sauce. And so honestly, when we were making uh, Beurre Blancs for service, we are literally trying to make for the amount of, uh, um, for the amount of product that we have, so. So as somebody watching all the effort and the work that goes into making this sauce, I am so much more appreciative when I order this food in a restaurant and hopefully soon we'll be able to order food again in restaurants like <laughs> this. And uh, that it's the time and the effort that goes into making these special sauces is quite extraordinary. Absolutely. Yeah, a lot of what we do, the smoke and mirrors behind scenes is can be very tedious and takes a lot to get to a point um, that we can serve it and do it uh, effectively and consistently. All right, so here's our Beurre Blanc. Nice and, nice and thick. I just turned the heat off, so we're gonna leave it on this. That's an induction burner, so there's no more heat to that, but there's still a little residual. I don't want it to heat up too much. So we're gonna pull it off, it's nice and cool. We'll leave that there. Now we have our salmon. The skin, nice and crispy there. So we're gonna plate up our sunchokes, salmon, and Beurre Blanc. So 
here's a little bit of our puree. Again, we'll have the, uh, um, the puree recipe online and it is uh, just peeled sunchoke, skin off, washed clean, peeled, and then boiled with water and a little bit of salt. So this is all available in local farms right now, sunchokes? Yeah, sunchokes is a, uh, it's, it's a, it's a winter vegetable, but they're still growing and they're still harvesting. And so I, I've had these for a couple weeks now, but I know there's still some out there uh, that you should be able to find. Uh, another name is Jerusalem artichokes. So. Now we have a little bit of our roasted, literally olive oil, salt and pepper, um, and then roasted. And again, anytime I can get a little bit of color on these, just the better, the, the flavor is just phenomenal. It becomes really nutty, um, a very uh, nutty and creamy texture, very fun. Beautiful piece of Nurka salmon. There we are. So traditionally, a lot of restaurants that are serving salmon, at least a, a good restaurant, is going to serve your salmon a little bit more on the medium to rare side. Um, so if you don't like medium rare, it's important to know that, and then just make sure you tell you like it cooked a little bit more. But if you really want to enjoy a great piece of salmon, try it medium rare. Oh, absolutely. It's, it's the yeah. way to go. Medium rare. It depends, you know, that's another one where it's steak and other things like that. It really depends on what your preference is. Uh, but if you, you know, if you really like the fresh texture of salmon, then, you know, raw sushi can't beat it. And obviously a nice pan seared with a, a crispy skin is you know, just as good. So here we are with a little bit of the beurre blanc. Now, again, I wouldn't put this directly on the skin uh, when I'm plating because I don't want to uh, soften that skin. So if it's a wine dinner or something else and we're walking this out to the table immediately, then, uh, then absolutely. But with this, I want to try to maintain that we have a crispy skin on it. And then I'm just going to use a little bit of our um, crispy sun chokes for a garnish here. And there you have it. So this is our uh, pan-seared Nurka salmon with sunchokes, three ways, and a Josh Pinot Noir, Beurre Blanc, or Beurre Rouge. Beurre Rouge, see, I'm not the only one who does it. And it also would taste really good with the Ponzi Chardonnay that we um, had yesterday. Absolutely. So Chardonnay goes really good with salmon as well as the uh, Pinot Noir, so. And you could use this, uh, um, whatever wine that you're uh, consuming with, you know, take a cup of it ahead of time and use it in this, uh, use this in this recipe and then it'll pair perfectly with the wine that you're drinking. So. And drink it at the same time. Absolutely. So we did put on the Facebook page um, a list of the Ponzi wines. So I'm actually going to be selling them by the case, only by the case right now. So if you um, email me, uh, the email address is on the Facebook page and you can um, order it by Monday, the end of day, Monday on the 20th. It'll be here for curbside pickup at Semiama Resort um, next Friday on the 24th. So make sure you get um, yourself some of these wines. It's great. The classical Pinot Noir is my personal favorite. It's absolutely delicious, totally worth it. You won't, you won't regret it. Cause you know what, we're inside drinking wine. It might as well be good wine. I know you told you to drink the box yesterday, but don't drink the box, <laughs> drink the good stuff. Not every day. Not every day, right? <laughs> I mean, I know we're all watching our budget. So so thank you guys so much for joining us. Thank you. Have a good day. Yep. Bye.